Second. Second. Call this meeting back to order well, at 1220. <coughs> Superintendent's report. Mr. Brown, do you have anything? I want to tag my mind. Uh, just want to update you guys on some enrollment figures. We have, um, get to them here. So on the uh, first day of school, we were at 1844. As of um, 5 o'clock yesterday, we are at 1892. So we increased about 50 or so kids on the first Monday of school. Um, we, uh, that last year, we were ahead of that. I think when it all shakes out, uh, we're going to end up probably being down, I'm guessing, in the range of 60 to 80 kids. Uh, and I, I attribute that to the tornado. Um, we're watching it carefully, though, because we have um, we started school earlier this year, and so there's still, I think, some families out there that are on vacation that are making it back. Um, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say it's all gonna shake out, and we're looking at we're looking at the number that we're gonna live with all year long until probably about the first of September. Um, so, but that's where we're at. And again, I'm just guessing. It's a complete estimate right now, but I'm guessing we'll. We will all shake out to being down somewhere in the 60 to 80 student range. That's a lot better than what we thought we could have been. Yes, correct. <coughs> okay, next item on the agenda budget workshop for board members. Do you have anything or 100% Ms. Moritz? It's 100% Ms. Moritz. The floor is yours.
if we went with 1825, I'd need to reduce the budget by 175 to make it balance. Right now we're balancing with an 88 of 1850, which if you'll remember for this current fiscal year, fiscal year 23, I used a 1900 number, which was, and I think we started with like 1972, our first day enrollment last year. So 70 down from where we were. And just for the first three days, I think we have ADA of 1840. So maybe we'll stay there. Uh -huh. That cold and flu season hits really hard. Ooh. Yeah. Bodies and numbers. Sorry. Um, so this next attachment, attachment B, will break down the local revenues a little more, the state, the federal, and then the other sources. Um, one source of revenue that's a little different than usual is the 60000 for auto repairs. Because we're getting those checks right about this month and last month, we haven't had really time to coordinate getting all of the vehicles repaired from the hailstorm. And so we'd like to do that the most economical way possible. So we're just going to put that in deferred revenue and then we'll recognize the revenue next year. And that's where that will come from. Athletic revenues up a little more this year, so I went ahead and put 60 instead of 50 in there. On state funding, we've gone over that. Federal, that SHARS number, we've seen a great increase. I think that is correlated with our SPED numbers going up, and that's where you see that SHARS funding. And then this other down here in 199 is your SF funding, so your Title One through Four. Since we consolidate, it goes back into 199. Here, chapter 313 <coughs> pilot revenue remains zero across their their calculation their <coughs> fancy algorithm just comes to a zero every time when they run it yeah and then it now we do tax this understand it. is this the year or is it next year that it all rolls back into M&O she said that it canceled this year is it, is it 23 it ends this year Um, the wind generation. Oh, yeah. <coughs> we gave them through a, through a uh, Chapter 313 tax abatement to where they were only charged $10 million worth of value for M&O purposes mm -hmm. for 10 years, even though they had like $300 million. And then it decreased more rapidly than what they had proposed to us, which is why there's a big long line of zeros since the 469000 back in 2017-18. In case anyone's missed any of my thousands of comments, I'm not a fan. No. Um, and to add, Richard wanted me to make sure I said that we will have a reduction in mineral values next year to keep that in mind. Go on to the expenses. Payroll, we got it in there yesterday, and we're sitting at about 643 higher in payroll than we were last year. That's only step raises, that's not an across the board 3%, anything like that. Um, it's we didn't see any attrition, we only added positions this year. And that's what attributes to that. So you're 25% of the budget. 
budget is these expenses on attachment C. And I'll go over these in a little, I'll talk through them in a little more detail so that you know why you see the increase or decrease on that far right column. You're going to see that decrease for function 11 instruction, the top line, mm -hmm. because we're taking IXL off of that and we're able to put it on ESSER this last year and that also fulfills our contract. That one was about 120000 overall. Um, so we're in the last year of paying for it, but then we still have two years after that that we can use it. Okay, uh, library and instruction stayed about the same. And these, keep in mind, these are just expenses. None of this has payroll in it. Um, on curriculum and instruction, I'm through till in this, but that might be going on a grant, so I may be able to pull 30000 off of here. But it, this also includes a few things that we had on ESSER, like Kagan. Now we're going to have to put it back into regular budget if we're still going to use it. Also, Patterns of Power, Read Naturally, Reading Academy, all of that. Um, the next few stayed about the same as far as your principal's account, your counselors, your nurses. Transportation's the next one. It looks like it went up 30000 but that's also has the 70000 for the storm repairs. So then we'll get to extracurricular activities, athletics, UIL, those sorts of things. Um, it shows an overall decrease of 50000 but that includes that there won't be band uniforms for 90000 on there. So the increases are travel, um, the higher traveling clubs this year were FCCLA, AG, Band, Soccer. The next one, so the overhead of general administration, that went up. We're looking at a program called Parent Square <coughs> in order for to communicate with parents um, across the district on the same platform. Right now we use a few different ones, so they go from one campus to the next, and parents awesome. may have been used to, yeah, using the old one. Our insurance, as far as the educator's liability and then the data and employer liability, went up 16000 We're seeing an increase again this year in copy paper. Um, I had to throw a little bit more in there for recruiting fees because we just plain didn't have any last year. As you remember. <laughs> Um, okay, the next one, I have Alan here to help me along with some of his stuff, but the things that are more overhead are electricity. We saw the past couple of years we just hadn't been putting enough in there because that last bill doesn't come in until after we've set budget, so we set it too low. Overall, we're increasing electricity by 114000 And then the other huge increase we saw was for our property taxes, or I'm sorry, property insurance, and that's 166500 Yeah, okay. So it went from 235 wait, I'm sorry, 236 last year to 402000 this year. Have we shopped that around? Yeah, we are. Doing a lot. <laughs> I've, I've already made calls. Okay. And, and yeah. I don't know that we'll be able to get it done before we set budget, but okay. um, we're going we're gonna to try. I know one company's trying. Okay. Thank you. Because that deductible yep. is scary, and we almost. The deductible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were blocks within it. Yep. Basically self insured, but paying them for the privilege of being so. Yes. Yeah. Alan, did you want to touch on some of the things in there that Yeah, I just want to touch base on some of these uh, about four items here. Uh, due to a lot of the, due to all the big rain we had and how much of it how quick we had some of it, you know, two or three weeks in a row that we just get these rains. Uh, we've had some uh, 
issues on the north, mainly the north side of top of Texas, uh, pushing out from the grout, or it's running off the roof and down that sidewall. There's some uh, beams. If you, if you look down those sidewalls, you'll see some more beams that are basically uh, encapsulated with uh, kind of plaster type stuff. Uh, it's pushing out the top of those. Uh, if we get another, if we stay in this wet season for a year or two, we're going to have problems. I mean, we're growing mold on the wall. Not to say like mold, we're growing fungus on the wall. We're staying in the grout, stuff like that. Uh, is there no way to put gutter on that, Alan? That's, that's what this is about. It's, there's 180 or 140 foot down each side of that building. There's 280 foot to do both sides. Uh, I got a quote from uh, the gentleman that put the roof on out there, just uh, about $45 a foot, but that's six inch mm -hmm. gutter to put around the building. So we're looking around 13 grand to get out of Have you checked with the wit on that by chance? No. I called him. He's so busy right now. Again. Yeah, I, I understand. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. But it needs to happen regardless of who does it. We're, yeah. we're going to have to do something. That building also has, you know, the fascia brick on it. It's just melting off of it. It's going to become an issue that we're going to have to address. It's, it's already starting to fall off out there. Uh, guttering on there. Uh, the other one's the uh, line, the only Kinder. Uh, probably looking around. Uh, estimate I got from the gentleman that does uh, quite a bit of our work. Uh, about seventeen hundred dollars if we just go in there and kind of band-aid it and pack gluten in there. And use a, he's got a foot packer that he can pack it down in there with. Uh, uh, honestly, my opinion: if we get rains again like we did this year, we're going to be it's going to work out beside it, or it's going to take it on out there again. Uh, so we almost need to put in a place for the water. I got, I got prices on pulling the fence out. Kind of a <coughs> system down through there, curve it up on each side, and put the fence back in the west side of the curve, so it all be there together. Uh, and then, of course, we'd have to on that uh, be on that northwest corner where a lot of that water comes off right there, and that's why it, it hits right there and it runs right down that. Uh, probably need about. 25 foot of gutter there and then around that little corner right there and we'll have to set a post at the end of that building to bring the bounce house down to have something to attach to. Uh, looking at around nine thousand dollars just to do the, the drainage trough put the fence back in and all that. Be using the original fence that's there just clean the cement off the post and do everything back. But basically make us a drainage trough down to really get it to the state right away. Yeah, because you don't want to move it just into the where the teacher's parking and wash that out and just cause no, another problem. We've already got a few little issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything that comes off that roof and down that hill finds a place to wash it out. But there's just a ton of water that comes off that roof right there in that mm -hmm. 10 or 15, 20 foot section. It's right there by the sidewalk and runs to that fence line. That's, that's kind of the natural drainage right there in that fence line. So, it's been so dry, all the grass there died, uh, so it was in there. Yes. Long the grass days. died because people refused to park in the parking lot. Well, but in, the, in Kinder, where the water was washed out, mm -hmm. mud, the grass also. Mm -hmm. Because we parked there. Well, inside the playground. <coughs> but yes, on the west side, yeah, because people. My opinion that's more of the long term fix versus, you know, if, and if we get a little drag in, we might make it two or three years, but eventually we're going to get rain like it's going Uh, I put a little in there again. We've been trying to do some door work every year on these old frames that are rotted out. We're getting in pretty good shape. Uh, I did put in a couple of doors for the end of Kinder, the east and west doors for those. Uh, the classroom doors are in pretty decent shape over there. Uh, we put all new door closures on them this summer. So we got everything where everything should be closing itself. Depending on the temperatures and all that, you know, the closures work different in winter than they do in the summer, so we just have to go back and readjust. Uh, but that's what that is for, is the two, replacing both double doors on the end of the building. Uh, that includes uh, throw the painting in there and everything, kind of help cover that cost. The other two, uh, the flooring project.
Vick at Wright and Williams. Both of those is uh, pulling out the old world of carpet that's the glue is turning loose. We've done Williams, we've got to do two, three classrooms a year for the last three or four years. Uh, budget in there, what I hope will be, get us three classrooms in Williams. And then Mrs. Chisholm has three rooms over there by the computer lab areas and all in there that's starting to do the same thing. They're all about the same age. So that glue is just turning to powder under it and just garbage rolling and making trip hazards and stuff like that. So, so and I can't wait until the remodel because it's a hazard now. Uh. <laughs> what, what are you going back I mean, with there? Year. <coughs> yeah, I know. What have you been going back with there? VCT tile. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's another thing that to discuss because you know, we, we've done some flooring at right for the last couple of years, three years in a row, and we, we've been abating it. I mean, it's a good thing to get rid of that stuff. But, you know, we've been going back with a, a tile that's matched as good as we can every year. Uh, tile's a, another one of those critters that every three or four years they delete. That color's gone, mm -hmm. that pattern's gone, that speck's gone, or whatever. So it's hard. You know, every four years, we rematch it again. We're already starting that process. Uh, so it's one of them deals, you know, it's going to be discussions when we do it now, or do we wait for the remodel, do we, or it has the same tile throughout, you know, those, those type of deals. Uh, the other one, I think, was. Uh, at the IT building. We had, uh, when I was going on vacation, y'all had the about three and a half, four inches or so in that two or three hours that day. Uh, we ended up getting some water in the north classroom at the IT building. Come up over the foundation under the block. So that room was not, there was nothing going on. The girls had already waxed and done all their stuff out there so nobody was in it nobody noticed it for a couple of days so I sat in there on them old floors which they're all 62 year old nine by nine tile that we'll be getting rid of anyway it's curled up some of that tile and it caused me to shut the room down uh, they're only using the old wood shop classroom it's always planning on using it anyway uh, but with that Tile being the way it is in there, I can get people in there stomping around on it. Uh, so we've got that locked off. This figure here is, if we did want to go ahead and abate it, that figures to, that, yeah, that figures to abate that both classrooms and the conference area when you first walk in. All that, that all has the old nine by nine tile. Uh, my opinion, I can't see going in and just baiting one room and still having the other two in the shape they're in. Uh, in saying that, if we do decide to do this and you're okay with it, my uh, recommendation on that would be just to abate it, clean the concrete good, and let them go on it until we do the remodel. Mm -hmm. If they have to have that other room to, to make it this year. Uh, that sense. way, we have to remodel all yeah. that and match yeah. out. Last item, I think, uh, is the uh, selected gator in the tank. We've got a old used three-quarter ton pickup that we bought at about 175, 80,000 miles on it. Uh, that we put the spray rig in the back of, and an 80-gallon spray tank with balloons. Starting to have a lot of issue with all of that. Uh, they've been after me uh, for the last three or four years. They looked at doing a gator and a tank to fit in the gator to get into places that they can't get the pickup. Uh, we've got about 50 foot of hose reel on that pickup, so you've got to position it right to build the cover areas with the, with the wand. Uh, this Uh, but this is a gator uh, with a spray tank that fits 
the back of it. I just feel something, this is something that, you know, we can use a lot better in places that we have a hard time getting to now. Uh, we can actually drive it across the yard with the sprinkler systems instead of parking up the side of the inch and long and trying to build with a 50 foot hose all over the place. Also, we can use it for other things. We can use it for spraying, you know, we can look the tank out of it and do it for other things. They uh, are also looking at maybe trying to uh, get a uh, spreader, you know, to help spread ice melt and stuff. Let's see that's in there. I think it would benefit us. I think it would make our job a little bit more efficient and help, uh, help take care of things better. saying the sheet that he has right there with the breakdown of everything we don't have in here. Oh no. Yeah. Okay. But I can but it is included in this but it's included so in the overall, yes. in the overall. Okay. Yeah gears aren't cheap but they are a lot more convenient. Well we use it for a lot more things. Yeah. They're a lot more functional. In and out. Vault terrace. Have you looked at the square combos from Wiley? I'm sorry. Wiley over in Emerald? The sprayers, they have, they make boom mounts and with guns and all the stuff to go on the back of those. They're pretty good priced. Yeah, no, I haven't. I just some, and that's what they keep all their stuff at Bartlett's too. Yeah. They have all their parts get brought there too. So yeah, and then there again, like I said, this is just budget prices. And if I can be okay, I'll do, I'll do all the shopping I can. Yeah, and we use a lot of wireless. That was like the first store I really knew when I married like the first store. Uh, we'll move on to, we'll see IT went up just a little bit, another SR clip, uh, line-wise uh, filtering uh, software that we use. Can't put it on SR anymore, we've got to put it on general fund. Uh, the next one, of course, you'll remember the football lights. They're not in budgeted in there. We really like to budget a hundred thousand for unknown capital expenditures, but I can only put fifty in there right now because we're not in balance. If I put a hundred, and then lastly, our SSA payments went up a little bit this year because those art funds are no longer available. Um, so each district had to pay a little more. Of course, we're, what, 56%, I believe, of SSA, and so we pay the most. Uh, lastly, that 150 at the very bottom is still the same as this past year, 50,000 into that fund for the football field turf, and then 100,000 to possibly have to, you'll see it a little, I'll explain it a little more later, to possibly have to fund cafeteria if they don't make ends meet and then I didn't put anything to possibly fund daycare because they're going to end with a fund balance this year and if need be they're going to use that. Fantastic. 
and that's from the federal funding that they receive or state funding grant funding for culprit <coughs> so next page you'll see we are going to balance we use a ADA of 1850. Uh, payroll is exactly 75% if the expenses are uh, 25%. And that is general fund, INS fund. There's your current bond principles, including our big one from last week. And then that top one. We have a vast majority of that that we've been paying into a fund that block holds and then that'll mature in four years and that one's paid off. So it's like 1.4, not really 5.9, but I have to report it as 5.9. Because we have the asset to offset it to yes. be ready to pay for it. Yeah. But we have like an early payment penalty or something. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I got the blessing today from John to advertise at 29 cents so that's 20 cents for the new bond and nine cents for our old debt it's still less than the 22 cents that we were asking for when the bond passed and that will fund our INS debt lastly we'll hit cafeteria they're pretty much the same my revenues were a little less this year than what I projected at the beginning of this past year. That's in part to summer school being canceled because, you know, with it being SSO, they do, you know, get a good little amount during the summer that they just missed out on this year. Um, you'll see down there at the bottom the transfer from general fund if need be. They will still have a small reserve this year, so hopefully we can avoid that. And see what our free and reduced does this year. Um, for them, payroll is down 24000 mm -hmm. over what it was. And if you'll remember, it was that, uh, what do we call it? Not longevity payment, um, retention. Oh, yeah. But COVID money. Stipend. <laughs> Thank you for being here during yes. the things. So that's where that decrease is. <coughs> and then pretty much these numbers for your 62 through 6400 are pretty much the same as what they were last year. I really didn't change them much. They're pretty on target to what um, I projected that they'd spend because we did go up a lot last year. It was E much easier to budget them this year because we had this past year to go off of as compared to last year where I just had two years yes. of free lunches and I guess it was really difficult. So that will be balanced as well. Um, what's left is Thursday the notice which I'll get to will be published and then on the 29th at our regular meeting uh, we will set budget and adopt the tax rate. Um, this page that I handed y'all right before we started. It's being redone because it has a, it's showing a 31 cent tax rate, which we're not doing. We're doing 29 cents for INS. So basically it's compared to last year. Oh, so that's the strikeout that's in there. The yes. Red. Okay. So in the bottom third of the page, I'll go through this quickly. Um, so if your house was valued at 113 last year, this year, it's going to be budgeted around 121. The taxable value of that last year would have been 62. With the 100,000 homestead exemption, you're going to be looking at a taxable value of 9,600. Last year's rate with INS was 0.9446. This year's rate will be 1.46. Um, on average, for this home value, the taxes were 589. This year, they're only going to be around $100. So you'll see a tax savings of 490 on the same house. And that's what they were talking about when we learned about bond sales before we put it on the election. Yes, so you'll see. That For happens. these median values, you'll see that savings. That's all the notes behind that. Thank you so much. For the most part. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. 
Brittany and Mr. Brown, I mean, does it scare you guys to budget for 1,850 kids? Is, it, is that realistic? I think that um, at the moment it's realistic. I can also tell you that we will be approaching it very conservatively all year long, knowing that that could be out there. I mean, our goal is going to be to end in the black next year, um, and and knowing that we're that we're we're setting that pretty close right now in this in this budget, it means we're going to have to be pretty diligent throughout the year about keeping expenses low, cutting where we can, saying no to some things that we might be able to to put off or or just say no to. Um, so that's that's how we're going to probably be approaching it all year long. And we, you know, and, and ever since June fifteenth, we've kind of known that's coming. So, Brittany, do you have anything to add to that? Yes, another thing that will help us, and what helped us, even though we saw our ADA drop from what I budgeted, is that those special pops, especially Echo Dis, is going to be higher than it was oh. this previous year. Unfortunately, due to the tornado, but on state funding, it will help us. So okay. it might offset okay. that ADA yep. somewhat, because so that one we do get a lot. If you don't ask for it, you don't get it. If we set our ADA lower and it's a lot higher, does it do anything other than change the budgeting? No, with our final settle-ups and all of our pain submissions, it fluctuates throughout the year. And then at the end, before we're audited, it all works out. Any other questions? Move on to discussion action items, consideration of possible action on MO and INS tax rates to publish for a public hearing on budget and tax rate. That's coming up. Okay. We'll get to that. That's next yeah. after this. Okay. So Brittany, are you wanting to approve m and and tax rates here to be published or we're just going to talk about them and, um, and then we'll... This is just to publish this paper in the newspaper with the correction of point two. So you just need a motion to be able to just publish just this publish with, yeah. the, yes. with the correction that's going to be made on that. Yes, yeah. Okay. Do I hear a second? Second. Moved and seconded to publish the notice of public meeting to discuss the budget and proposed tax rate. Uh, as far as discussion on, on the motion, I think it's really important that people that are, are watching right now or listening right now, when they see this that's published in the paper or they see that it's published, I would assume on the district's website as well, be published places that people can get get to this to really take a look at at where we have been in the past versus where we are today from a school tax standpoint um, especially from an MO standpoint um, as the legislature continues to compress rates um, we're looking at a compressed rate here of uh, 73.8 cents a year ago was 85.46 year before that was 94 it was 94 96 for two or three years before that before that was a dollar four so as we continue to see m and o tax rates maintenance and operations tax rates decrease by virtue of the state commanding that we decrease that uh, it does a couple of things for us as taxpayers in the in the community number one it it mutes a bit of the of the increase in ins tax rates for bond repayment Back last winter, the board made a decision to that they felt that, that the needs of the district were strong enough, high enough, important enough to be able to to ask the community to be able to to have a bond election, to be able to ask the community if they are interested, and let the community make the decision on what direction we were going to go. And by about a 60 to 40 split the community did approve increasing that by at that point in time 22 cents we're looking at 20 cents today but what the additional compression of 
M&O rates does, it makes that only about a 10 cent increase. Uh, so less increase than, than we thought we were going to look at. Um, Brittany had just talked about the, the increase in the homestead exemption, which pushes down even more. Again, $121,000 market value residence has an average taxable value for this coming year of $9,600 really makes makes a much more livable I guess for want of a better term increase to be able to take care of some of the needs that this district has had or and continues to have from a from a rebuilding remodeling standpoint so I think there's some some very good news in, in what we're looking at on here um, you know whether or not someone on their total tax bill sees an increase there's a lot of other factors that, that feed into that but from a, from a PISD standpoint, we continue to see compression on the M&O rates, and we continue to see uh, support, as we saw last May, from the, from the community in the direction that we're heading to try to do some remodeling and try to bring some of these, these buildings up to, the, to 2023 and to be able to serve, serve our kids from here on, on forward. So I think there's some very good, very good news in here. So, but people really need to pay attention. Take, take an opportunity to look at, at some of these these flyers some of this information that's on here make yourself aware of, of what is in there so is there any additional discussion on the motion seeing none all in favor all opposed motion carries five zero next item on the agenda consideration of possible action to approve the 2023-24 district texas teacher evaluation and support system you have a handout on that yes this is a routine item I'm gonna let miss mrs. Hale talk about it but uh, it's a routine item that we do every year okay, thank you um, as mr. Brown said in front of you is the t-test calendar that I'm proposing for the 23 24 school year it is routine this is just a guideline for teachers of when they can first start going into the classroom and doing formal evaluations <coughs> and then when those need to be completed and submitted by um, I have teachers test training starting today after school for teachers that are experienced but new to the district today and tomorrow and then in a few weeks we're going to have team test training for those that are new to the profession and then each campus administrator will be doing refreshers on t test which is required each year as well so I'll be happy to answer any questions any questions seeing none chair would entertain a motion to approve the t test calendar motion second Move to second to approve the calendar as presented. Any additional discussion? All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Consideration of possible action to approve an agreement with B. E. Scott Stark to serve as the district's independent representatives to provide architectural, engineering, and consulting services related to the district's 2023 bond projects, RFQ 2023 1. That's a lot of words. And authorize the superintendent to take other action related there to on the district's behalf. How do I know that Fred wrote that? <laughs> <laughs> you see his fingerprints on that? Oh, I see his fingerprints all the way on that one. Okay, this really is just a follow-up from a couple weeks ago. You guys uh, voted to hire Scott Stark um, as our independent architect in the bond project. Um, it's the same proposal. Fred has just written up the contract and he's bringing it to you guys to uh, approve the contract. Once this contract is approved and Scott is hired, then we will begin to uh, put out the RFQ for our construction uh, company and we begin the, the process of getting started on a bond. Um, after we approve, after we get the RFQs, get our uh, those back and we select a construction company, then we start the design process. Um, so, and I'm just, I'm speaking this so that we'll all understand, there probably won't be a lot on the ground or visible uh, for the next nine months or so while all the design goes on. Mm -hmm. But um, I'll be trying to keep you guys up to date on what's happening with the bond. Um, but uh, this is the first step in getting that, getting that going so we can get into selecting the construction and start the design. Okay, do I hear a motion? Motion. Second. Moved and seconded to approve item 7C. I'm not going to read that again. Any additional discussion? All in favor? Oh, yes, sir. Sorry. If we're not, uh, if things start to happen and we're not happy with his actions, how easy is this? Because are there outs in the contract? I want to say more that 
notification. Yeah, with with a certain amount of time, I think you can. You I, can yeah, I saw a draft of it. I believe it's thirty days. Yeah, a certain amount. Thirty days. Of, certain amount of time. Okay. Notification. Yes. It's not a guaranteed. It's a good question. Just contract. I want one of those, but I don't get one. And I believe he's being paid by the hour. Okay. He is. So he is uh, yeah. under our contract. So we can always just halt the hours if mm -hmm. if something happens. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. I'm sorry. Any other discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries five zero. Discussion and consideration for opening a new checking account with Prairie National Bank named Bond Construction. Motion. Second. Moved and seconded to open a new checking account with Prairie National Bank named Bond Construction. Any additional discussion? All in favor? All opposed? One abstention. Motion carries five or four zero one. Last item, consideration of possible action of uh, Perryton ISD representatives to TASB Delegate Assembly. Every year at the TASB Convention, which is now called Tex EdCon, uh, they hold a delegate assembly where each district can send a representative for, and they present the statewide issues, legislator, uh, legislature issues, um, rules issues uh, before the, the delegates that are there and each delegate can vote whether they approve or, or deny or, or disallow the issues. Um, uh, Sarah is going to be going to Tasa Tasby this year and so and has agreed to be our delegate at the delegate assembly so I, I would uh, ask for a, a nomination or, or just an agreement from the board for her to represent Perry to ISD at the delegate assembly. Say you all on the south side? Yes. Is that a motion? Motion. And a second? Second. And a second. We have a motion and a second to approve Sarah Trigellis as our IS, parent ISD representative to TASB Delegate Assembly or whatever new name you said that I've already gotten. <laughs> <laughs> Any additional discussion? Uh, will we get a list of those ahead of time so I can review them with the board president? I I think so. I would think there'd be a packet. That yeah, because I, I think so. Looked at those before. Yeah. Okay. Any other discussion? Go out. All in favor? <laughs> All opposed? Can I that? vote? Yeah, you can vote for oh, yourself. Okay. Vote for you. okay. If you don't want to, we may need to redo. No, the I, mean, I, I thought I should have stayed. I don't know. Felt weird. Okay. Motion carries five zero. Okay. Meeting is adjourned. All right.